Good evening. I would like to welcome you to AUGA Group quarterly meeting with investors. I'm Emilia, an account manager at NASDAQ Vilnius, and I'm delighted to be the moderator for the today's event. The agenda couldn't be simpler. We start with the presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. As always, I encourage every one of you to ask questions during or after the presentation in the question boxes of your screen. With that said, I am pleased to introduce today's presenter, the CFO of AUGA Group, Mindugas Ambrasas. Mr. Ambrasas, please, the floor is yours. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as always, I just want to say thank you for, for your time and interest uh, in AUGA Group. And today I will try, you, try to give you a little bit more information about our activities and results uh, for 2020. And uh, uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, things you want to discuss, uh, feel free to contact me and my contact information will be at the end of the presentation. So uh, I think uh, we can start and uh, I would say, if just to give some uh, overview, overall overview of the results, uh, uh, overall, we are really positive about the uh, results of the AUGA group uh, for 2020. Uh, we not only had increase and quite significant increase in revenues, but uh, I would say more importantly, we managed to increase uh, our profitability and EBDA quite substantially as well. And as always, uh, for more detailed information, I would suggest to go into our four uh, main uh, business segments just to get uh, information where all this change uh, is coming from. As always, uh, let's start from our largest segment, uh, crop growing. And um, uh, already uh, nine months uh, results already gave, uh, I would say, quite accurate uh, overview of uh, how uh, our uh, harvest was in 2020 and no major uh, changes uh, happened uh, in the last quarter but still uh, a brief reminder of, of of the situation so first of all uh, our cultivated land uh, had increased uh, a little bit by almost 1000 uh, hectares uh, comparing 2019 and 2020 and in general uh, year was uh, uh, quite good uh, comparing after a couple of years with very uh, difficult weather conditions uh, we saw quite an improvement in in yields overall not only in auga but in agriculture in our region overall so in our group we had an improvement in yields uh, almost 14 percent year on year in average uh, for all the cultures um, honestly we have to say that we had some uh, maybe ambitious, but targets and uh, expectations uh, for some of the crops a little bit higher, but still we believe that this is quite a good result. Uh, on cost side, uh, it uh, was, uh, uh, cost level was uh, very similar to the previous year, very uh, insignificant, I would say, increase uh, by 2%. Uh, and uh, what is uh, uh, maybe the largest uh, and negative effect on our results uh, was that uh, we saw a quite uh, a steep uh, decrease in prices of some of, the, of some of the cultures. But here uh, I want to explain a little bit more because uh, decrease of prices was not only about uh, decrease of prices in general. Uh, this decrease was mainly uh, affected by change of uh, quality of, of some of the cultures or mix uh, of the, uh, the crop uh, we had. And during uh, nine months result, uh, presentation, uh, we saw a very specific uh, and we showed very specific example. Uh, the biggest impact uh, for us uh, was with the wheat. Uh, then in terms of uh, yields, we were in very similar level comparing to, to 2020 and 2019. But unfortunately, specific weather conditions uh, resulted in quite dramatic, I would say, change in quality of, uh, of crops. So instead of uh, what we had historically, almost 75% of food quality uh, crops, uh, last year we had only 35% uh, of same quality crops. And this, of course, resulted uh, if you are selling and, and quite big amount of, uh, of uh, 
feed uh, quality crops uh, price in general is lower and and this also gave us a negative impact uh, of almost 2.6 million euros uh, uh, so uh, there was a result which was lower than we expected and we planned uh, for 2020. So uh, when we talk about uh, decrease in prices, so it's not only about the price, uh, about the prices. The, the biggest impact was uh, from change of, of, of the mix and, and quality of, of crops. Um, so uh, one important note was which was maybe not mentioned in the previous presentations uh, now we have also results of our uh, forage crops and we see very positive developments uh, there uh, we have increase in uh, yields and we have even decrease in in costs per hectare so this doesn't give us a positive uh, impact on our financial results at the moment uh, but crops are very, uh, but uh, forage crops are very important for our dairy segment because this is they are used uh, for our dairy uh, operations, and uh, this change uh, of increase uh, of of yields and increase of quality and decrease of cost will have positive uh, effect on the results of dairy segment uh, in the future. Um, giving a little bit more information about yields, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, I would say, uh, even if we see this as a quite good result, uh, our expectations uh, were maybe a little bit higher, uh, but overall it doesn't change our target. Uh, still, in, in the longer perspective, we believe that, uh, and we aim to achieve uh, the same yields as conventional farming in Lithuania, and if we see it, and if we look at our historical figures, we believe that we are uh, almost uh, there. Uh, this year, or, or last year, gave us uh, some uh, additional uh, lessons uh, because, yes, we are, of course we we had to do our homework and to see what uh, could be done differently in order to to achieve even better result. And here, I would say we have uh, an, an advantage as a big uh, company uh, and and operating in different uh, regions of Lithuania because uh, using different practices we can see what works well what doesn't work that well so even in this situation when we had uh, specific weather conditions quite uh, cold uh, spring which didn't allow our fertilizers to be absorbed in very well uh, good uh, way we saw some ways uh, which could help uh, us to improve our results if similar situations would happen in the future. So, you know, we, we did our learning and, and, and we believe we also uh, taking something from, from this uh, for our future, uh, future jobs. Um, I already talked a little bit about uh, price dynamics. Uh, so, yes, uh, we had the uh, trend uh, for almost a couple of years when the prices for organic uh, wheat uh, in, was uh, were decreasing but we also had uh, and saw quite a change in the last quarter of, of last year uh, when we saw uh, an increase of average prices uh, for quarter by almost seven percent and we also see that uh, this uh, trend uh, continues uh, in this year as well so this also gives us some positive uh, expectations for, for, for this year prices. And uh, overall, despite all those uh, challenges, I believe we achieved quite significant, significant improvement of our financial results. Um, as you know, uh, our financial results uh, consist of those three important parts. So first of all, if we talk about uh, our agricultural activities, so gain of uh, revaluation of our biological assets uh, was uh, 7.7 .7 million euros for 2020 and it's 45 percent increase uh, comparing to previous uh, year uh, second uh, part is, is uh, our sales operations uh, so uh, we sold the bigger part of our harvest uh, during financial year it, as our harvest was larger, so even because of that, uh, sales volumes also increased. And uh, I think a significant improvement is that even with the bigger volumes, even with decreasing uh, prices, uh, we managed to get uh, smaller negative result from sales of operations this year. 
Uh, and the third uh, important part is uh, subsidies, where we also see quite an improvement uh, in 2020 comparing to 2019. And the main explanation uh, here is uh, that uh, in 2019, the group uh, was sanctioned uh, by almost 2 million euros and didn't receive uh, part of uh, organic subsidies. Uh, as uh, it was already mentioned a couple of times in our presentations, uh, all uh, those uh, regulations uh, for which we applied are not uh, valid anymore, so we didn't expect uh, any sanctions uh, in 2020 and going further, so this really happened, so we received uh, full expected uh, subsidies as it was planned, and that's why, and that's where the biggest uh, or the main increase in subsidies amount comes. And all this uh, leads to the gross profit of, of almost uh, 13 million euros, almost 62% increase uh, comparing to our result in crop growing segment in 2019. So as I said, I think uh, we, we had uh, really better uh, year in terms of weather. Uh, we had some challenges uh, and still managed to uh, improve our results quite substantially. So. We're really happy with, with that result. Uh, going uh, a little bit to, to the future, we already uh, uh, have our winter uh, crops uh, in, in the field. Uh, and uh, we would say that we, are, we have quite positive expectations for, for next year harvest as well. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, sowing process uh, was, was very smooth uh, just because of weather. Uh, we were able, we didn't have lots of heavy rain, so we were able to, to, to do all the sowing in time and in, in the most efficient way. Uh, to our understanding, uh, our weather winter uh, condition uh, was, uh, was not, not bad for, for, for our crops and, and current condition as we see is, is good. Uh, and we also, um, are making some strategic changes uh, uh, to what we are growing uh, and, and what we are planning to grow. So e even now, if we see we have very uh, similar proportion of, uh, of winter crops co comparing to summer crops, and though our total area, land area is growing, so uh, winter crops uh, area also growing a little bit. But uh, what we are doing, we are also trying to change uh, composition of uh, cultures, uh, what we are growing. Uh, we trying to focus uh, on uh, more on specific uh, uh, cultures uh, and, and where we see uh, bigger potential pro for profitability and bigger risk uh, depending on, on weather conditions or price uh, fluctuations. So for example, uh, this year we have uh, quite significant uh, change and increase in growing of uh, seed clover which is like very unique and, 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 and specific uh, culture, but uh, uh, we, we, we see potential and we already have some sales contracts in place for, for, for this culture and, and for, for next year's harps. So overall expectations are quite positive and then and, and we will see how this goes further. Uh, second uh, important segment, uh, it's dairy. Um, I want just to start maybe from few uh, quite positive trends uh, which are already happening for almost uh, a year, I would say. Uh, first of all, uh, about the uh, share of milk uh, which is sold of, as, as organic milk. Uh, we already told uh, about this a couple of times, I believe, but uh, the group managed uh, to achieve that almost 100% of milk is sold as organic from Q2 2020. And now we are constantly on the same level. 90, 100 percent of the milk is sold as organic, meaning that we are getting this premium for, for organic milk. And this allowed us uh, to keep uh, selling prices stable in the environment when we saw some drop in, in, in milk prices in, in the middle of, of, of the year uh, last year. Uh, secondly, uh, the group really invested a lot, not only, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, financial means only, but also from uh, human resources to, to increase efficiency of our uh, milk uh, operations or dairy operations. So we already starting to see uh, results uh, from there. And as you can see from the, from the graph uh, below, um, 
milk yields per cow uh, per day are constantly improving. Year to year, uh, there are some fluctuations uh, during the year just because of uh, seasons, uh, when you have cows inside or outside. So this affects, but if you see general trend, how the situation is changing year to year, we see really improvement in that. We had some uh, dip in, in the last month, but it's more like a technical issue, but not, uh, not the trend, we believe. So if we go to financial results, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we really uh, were focusing on this uh, segment and we really believed that uh, it doesn't show our full potential. So lots of effort was uh, to, to improve the situation. And we already see that uh, this is already starting to give uh, some uh, results. So as um, I showed in the graph before, uh, average milk uh, per cow increased uh, by 6% in 2020. Uh, our uh, total production uh, increased uh, less by only 3%, but this was also affected by, by one thing. Uh, we are trying to uh, improve uh, quality and efficiency of our herd. Uh, so that's why we are uh, getting rid of uh, some of uh, aged or ineffective uh, cows, we are replacing them with new ones. So uh, we didn't uh, have like a full capacity and we couldn't uh, increase our production in, in the level we would like uh, it uh, to be. And, and that's why the number of cows uh, had uh, decreased uh, in, in fourth quarter. But uh, overall, going uh, looking uh, to the future, uh, the group is, is, is planning, and it's not only planning, but it's already doing this. We are increasing uh, and, uh, our herd, and the plan is uh, to increase it to the maximum possible capacity to, to, the, to have full uh, production facilities, which we already have in place. So it's almost uh, 3.6 thousand cows by Q3 uh, this year. So this uh, allow, will allow us not only to improve quality of, of herd, but also to use our production uh, capacities in the maximum uh, and efficient uh, way. Um, so uh, looking at the financial figures, uh, as I said, uh, due to uh, increasing uh, production and uh, steadily increasing prices, we, we have increased uh, our revenues. At the same time, we managed to decrease uh, cost of sales. Uh, we had some uh, increase if, uh, in revaluation of biological assets, uh, and this is mainly related to, to as I mentioned, change in, in, in our herd. Uh, changes in subsidies are also related to uh, with uh, sanctions uh, we had last year, because part of that was accounted to agricultural activity and part of the dairy. So that's where the, the difference and, and improvement is coming from. But overall, uh, all those uh, small changes uh, are also giving a result. And uh, we see uh, that uh, after several years of uh, loss making uh, operations, we, we have positive result for a year from dairy segment as well. Um, mushroom uh, growing segment. Uh, I would say that uh, our targets and uh, plans uh, were a little bit higher. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we saw that uh, this segment was really affected by the whole uh, COVID uh, situation, and this had effect on, on the results of the segment as well. Uh, but to start from positive note, I think even in this uh, difficult situation, we still uh, managed to increase our production, our sales. Uh, so uh, I think uh, what uh, this proves that even in this uh, quite labor intense uh, business, we manage uh, to, to, to manage all the operational risks and, and to keep our production facilities working uh, 100%. Uh, but uh, as mentioned, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic really affected the uh, business in, in quite a few ways. Uh, first of all, the market itself uh, became really volatile, uh, mainly uh, because of uh, different uh, uh, reactions or strange behavior from uh, Polish producers. 
uh, supply uh, and, and prices were very fluctuating during the year and this didn't allow us maybe to, 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 to work in the most uh, effective and efficient uh, way. Secondly, of course, we lost almost all sales or big part of sales to catering uh, industry because uh, for, for, for the obvious uh, reasons. Um, historically, uh, last uh, month, December was really high season for uh, mushroom uh, segment. Uh, but uh, due to restrictions, uh, this year uh, sales in December were not as high as, as we uh, planned and expected and uh, had uh, historically. Um, also, uh, this uh, uh, had effect not only on our, let's say, main markets, Baltics and Scandinavia, but uh, our uh, mushroom seed bed uh, is exported to, to, to Russia. So generally in, in Russian uh, uh, champignon uh, industry, they have very difficult times and generally uh, there is a huge overproduction and then and, and generally the market has lots of, lots of issues. So a uh, few of customers we had there, they generally stopped uh, operations and, and that's why we, we lost majority of our sales of, of seedbed uh, to, to, to that country. And of course, uh, we, we had some additional costs related to just uh, spending uh, to, to make sure that uh, all our employees are safe and, and, and can operate uh, in a safe environment. So when you sum up all this, uh, this of course had uh, an effect on profitability of, of uh, mushroom growing uh, business. Uh, another effect, uh, which was also, I think, uh, slightly related, not slightly, but related to, to, to COVID situation, we saw uh, quite an uh, increased uh, demand uh, for packed mushrooms. And this, uh, of course, allowed us to increase average uh, price. Uh, unfortunately, this increase didn't compensate all the losses we, we, we had, and I mentioned uh, previously. So overall, uh, uh, we, we showed that we are able to produce more and we are still able to sell everything we are producing, but all uh, those effects uh, we had uh, had uh, put a pressure on, on, on our profitability and gross profit of the segment uh, increased uh, decreased by 29% in 2020 comparing to 2019. Uh, talking about the future, uh, uh, we still see that, uh, and, and we really believe that this uh, situation will, will uh, somehow be solved and, and our life uh, will get back to normal as much as possible. So this, uh, this uh, temporary effect we were having uh, will not be affecting our business uh, anymore. But uh, still, uh, uh, last year we had uh, quite big hopes uh, in increasing uh, result of the segment uh, uh, based on increasing part of our organic uh, mushroom sales. Uh, but this was also very difficult to do just because the same uh, COVID situation, because all our main customers, they were mainly focusing on having the same products on the shelves and didn't want to go into new uh, assortment. So this is, uh, like lost possibility last year, but this is new possibility for us this year and going further. Secondly, I think the situation uh, somehow motivated us uh, to, to, to focus more on new markets. So we are really working and have first sales to, to, to new uh, Western uh, markets. So then we'll have more information and, and more news to, sh to share. Of course, we will we'll inform our investors and, and uh, about this uh, about this. So um, FMCG. I think uh, that is really a success story of uh, 2020. Uh, because we had uh, really a substantial growth in, in, in the segment. And uh, what is, I think, even more important, uh, we really had this growth in all the markets we are uh, operating and in all product groups uh, we, we are selling. So if we talk about main product groups, so it remained unchanged. So still uh, preserved mushrooms, vegetables and soups is the biggest uh, 
uh, part of, of, of our sales. Uh, but if we talk about markets, so, so we had uh, a very big increase in sales to US market. Uh, we entered it a couple of years ago, and I think that, uh, and I would say that the first normal sales started last year. So that's why we see an increase of 458% year on year. And now USA is really the largest market for FMCG goods uh, for our group. Uh, Lithuania is still our second most important and largest uh, market and still shows, uh, I would say, solid growth of 14 percent. And then, uh, as you maybe know from, from our different announcements, we are really working all over the, 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 the world. So generally last year we, we started selling in Australia, for example, and we also expanding uh, business in the markets we were already present. So here we see really a growth uh, and, and uh, hopefully, and, and uh, what is a good thing, as I said, that this growth comes not only from one big customer in one specific market, but we see overall growth in different markets and different product groups uh, we, we operate. Uh, so this uh, also had a positive effect on, on our uh, financial results of, of the segment. So as you can see, uh, we had uh, revenue growth by almost 80%. Uh, and uh, uh, then we are using our production uh, capacities. Uh, we are better using uh, uh, our production capacities. Of, of course, it, uh, it gives uh, impact on our efficiency and, and profitability. So this allowed us uh, to increase uh, profitability quite substantially. And, and uh, instead of very symbolic uh, gross profit in 2019, we already have 0 0.8 million euros gross profit for, from the segment in 2020. And uh, what is important uh, looking into this year, uh, we really believe that uh, all those uh, new contracts we are signing and new discussions we are having and we had in 2020, they uh, will uh, allow us uh, to continue this, this uh, trend and, and have a positive uh, trend on development of the segment in, in this year uh, as well. So, uh, to, uh, for the start, uh, about maybe overall uh, review of, of, of the results of the group, I would say uh, we had several important uh, events uh, or things we did uh, last year, which really have a significant effect, not only on our financial results for 2020, but will also allow us uh, to, to grow uh, in a longer perspective as well. So uh, first of all, uh, the group uh, prepared and uh, approved and announced uh, our long-term five-year strategy in uh, April uh, last year. Uh, so I think this really gives uh, uh, understanding for everyone where the group is, is heading to and what we want to achieve in the in, in future. Uh, secondly, uh, I think uh, which is also a big uh, step uh, for, for the group was uh, acquisition of uh, Rebuild Tech Company, which really allowed us uh, uh, to support this growth in FMCG segment we are having. So now we have all the tools needed to, to, to uh, grow the segment even further. Uh, thirdly, uh, I think a big step for us was uh, uh, refinancing of our uh, credit facilities uh, in financial institutions, in the banks. We did this in the end of the, of the year. So this uh, really, uh, 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 these things really helps us uh, to focus on our uh, short-term and long-term strategies uh, in increasing efficiency and achieving uh, our overall strategy, long-term strategy. And from other side, uh, I think from investor side, um, last year, uh, uh, our group, uh, uh, let's say two companies uh, in Light Research and Wood started following uh, our group. So we really believe and hope that this additional, this additional information really gives uh, benefit uh, to our investors, uh, to our past partners, 
to give a better understanding uh, and overview how the company and the group operates and, and uh, maybe gives uh, better uh, uh, or more uh, trust in, 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 the, in, in our uh, future plans and activities. Uh, as mentioned in, in previous slides, uh, we really saw uh, improvement in all the segments uh, we operate, uh, except maybe for profitability decrease in, in, in mushroom growing segment. Uh, so uh, we believe uh, that uh, we have uh, reasons uh, to, to, to believe that uh, uh, this trend uh, uh, will continue in 2020 as well. Um, and uh, uh, there are not only believing, but uh, there are really clear uh, reasons to, 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 to be sure of, of, of that statement. And we, we discussed about this in, in, in the presentation uh, earlier when we were discussing uh, segments. Uh, to give better understanding uh, where all this change is coming from and maybe just to have a full overview of the picture. Uh, so we had the increase of a BDA by almost 4 million euros in 2020. And uh, as you can see, almost all segments uh, except for mushroom had a positive uh, effect on, on the growth of a BDA. But of course, uh, crop growing is the largest segment, and this had the largest impact on improving res uh, result as well. Uh, unfortunately, as mentioned, this uh, lower crop prices, so I would say uh, quality uh, had a negative effect and didn't allow us uh, to improve uh, result even, even, even more. Um, in terms of uh, financial numbers, uh, we didn't have uh, significant uh, changes in, in, uh, in our uh, balance sheet. Uh, so generally, we have 3% uh, growth in, in assets, and it's mainly related to acquisition of uh, Gribo LP. Uh, our interest-bearing debt level is almost uh, on the same level as it was uh, a year ago. Uh, of course, uh, improving uh, results uh, gave us uh, improving uh, Nash cash flow from from operation uh, from operating activities. So this allowed us uh, to, to to focus more on our strategy implementation. So meaning we were able to invest a little bit more uh, to our uh, R and D projects to increasing efficiency in our operations and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, this was also uh, uh, supported uh, by refinancing of, of uh, our credit facilities. So just once again, uh, I just wanted to remind that because we really believe that this is really important uh, uh, task we, we managed to do last year uh, that, um, after refinancing, we not only had uh, have uh, better financing conditions, but we have much more flexibility and opportunities and freedom to make a decisions where we want uh, to go and what we want to do, to do as a group. And uh, another important uh, note that uh, historically, uh, when the group uh, changed uh, its operation to organic model, uh, we saw quite an increase in our working capital needs uh, just because of the business model. Uh, what we see and what are the latest developments that now we are managing increase our volumes without increasing uh, additional need for additional financing. So together with uh, those additional limits uh, we have from uh, refinancing of our credit facilities, it gives even more flexibility for us in terms of uh, investment and financing needs uh, to, to support our strategy implementation and uh, R&D developments. So everything what we are doing to, to achieve our, our, our targets and goals. And uh, as always, uh, information about uh, recent share price development. So uh, I think uh, together with improving results, we saw uh, share price increase by almost 23% uh, last year to, to, to February this year. Um, I think what is also important and uh, uh, what we really uh, also trying somehow to, to promote that uh, it's not only uh, shares, but our bonds, they also 
uh, it's between top three corporate bonds in the Baltic uh, market in terms of uh, turnover. So we really uh, hope that uh, our uh, you know our steps towards being open to, to to our investors, our creditors, really helps uh, investors to make a decision to 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 to, to become uh, investor in 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 our group and, and to believe in what we are doing. So, as, as mentioned, uh, here you can find, as always, uh, more detailed information about results. Uh, you can find uh, numbers in, in Excel formats. Uh, you have my contact information if there are any other questions and, and, and comments you would like to discuss later on. And to finish, uh, uh, you know, I think that now we are in situation when, uh, after several quite difficult years, we see very positive trends in, in, in our results. And we know what we want to do uh, to continue going to that direction. So now we are in start, I believe, and we would just need to go, go forward. So thank you. And uh, I think we sh can go to the question part now. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambrosas, for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, now we will proceed uh, with the questions and before that I would like to remind you once again that questions can be sent in on the question box of your screen. So let's begin. Uh, the first question is as following. It seems prices for conventional crops are growing. Does this have or will have positive effect on AUGA's results? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um in general, I would say uh, there is no very direct uh, correlation between uh, prices for conventional and organic crops, uh, though uh, we see some trends which are similar uh, just because, of course, uh, the crops uh, affect uh, each other. Uh, but uh, if we talk about effect on, on, on results of uh, AUGA group, um, uh, if we talk about uh, 2020 harvest, uh, unfortunately, effect won't be uh, large because a uh, really big part of, of the harvest is already contracted uh, or sold. I think it's almost 96% uh, for, for, for today. Uh, so if we talk about impact uh, on, on sales, so we will be talking more uh, about impact uh, uh, and outlook for this year's harvest. So, of course, uh, uh, we see that this trend uh, continues and, and hopefully will continue. So, of course, this, this will have positive effect uh, on result uh, for 2021. Thank you for your answer. Let's proceed with another question. Uh, it is as following. What investments are needed to support continuing growth in FMCG segment? Thank you. Thank you. Um, no major investments are needed to, to our facilities uh, to grow uh, and to keep our production with increasing uh, sales. Uh, current production uh, capacities uh, allow uh, to double production easily uh, and without any significant investments. And I think what is even more important that uh, during last year, uh, where were months uh, when we had very huge increase in, in production uh, needs, when we had some specific orders to, to do. So generally, we already had uh, production volumes which are twice bigger than average, and we really managed uh, to, to do that uh, without any delays or, or problems. So uh, our existing capacities uh, can support uh, this growth uh, for I don't know, one, two years uh, easily, I'd say. Thank you, Mr. Ambrosas, for your answers. Uh, we are indeed receiving quite a lot of questions, so please, uh, <laughs> please bear with us. Uh, and uh, another question would be, uh, does AUGA Group has an ambition to grow its business portfolio by acquiring new companies, not only from Lithuania? Thank you. Um, we have no plans uh, of, uh, to, to do some acquisitions uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, 
uh, I think um, even in our strategy presentation, we said that uh, our major and the biggest focus uh, for today is really to uh, get the best uh, result from, from the capacities we are having uh, right now. So generally, we still see lots of uh, things what we can do and lots of things to improve uh, in, in our current business volumes. So that's, that's one thing. Uh, secondly, uh, and that's also from coming from our strategy, uh, we are creating um, a new uh, business model, which uh, we believe uh, can, can be expanded to, to, to other countries as well. So I think in a shorter period of time, we are really not planning any acquisitions. But if we talk about our long-term strategy, so you know, everything is on the table. Thank you for your answer. Another investor is curious and asking, is management giving any guidance for expected 2021 results? If so, what, what is it? Thank you. Uh, historically, we didn't uh, give any guidances uh, about our forecasted results and, and we will continue doing this. But I believe from today's presentation, uh, you should have some idea uh, uh, about uh, developments, uh, what are happening in our different uh, segments and where we see uh, how, and how we see the results uh, are, are trending. So I think I said that during the presentation that we are quite uh, optimistic about this year and see uh, potential in, in, in improving results, but we are not uh, giving uh, specific figures. Thank you for your comment. Another question is, does AUGA plan to enter a plant-based meat substitute market like Beyond Meat? Thank you. Okay, so that's a that's good question and very interesting question, but I'm not sure we have enough time to discuss all this because this is like also very trendy topic, uh, but I'll try to, to answer uh, quickly. Uh, First of all, uh, we are already in this uh, market uh, as a supplier of ingredients. Uh, but uh, Auga Group uh, doesn't uh, plan uh, to, 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 to produce uh, meat substitutes uh, itself. And here is uh, and, and, and here is why. Uh, I would say. Uh, there are two, uh, maybe even more, but there are two different strategies and, and, and uh, they both uh, tackle uh, the same issue. Uh, we say and we know that uh, agriculture is one of the biggest uh, polluters in the world. Uh, it emits a lot of CO2, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to solve this uh, problem uh, for, for, for the future. So one uh, way to do is uh, to stop uh, growing cows, uh, starting producing uh, meat uh, substitutes, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, we believe, and we are saying in our strategy, and we are really already working on that, that uh, Auga Group will be able uh, to produce uh, organic uh, products without uh, costs to nature, meaning that our ways how we are producing meat, uh, how the whole group operates, at the end of the day will be uh, friendly to, to, to earth and planet. So then uh, consumer will have like also two alternatives. First of all, to, to, to use uh, meat substitutes or to eat uh, normal uh, fresh uh, meat, knowing that production of this meat didn't have any negative uh, effect on environment. Uh, personally, I, I would choose the second option, but you know that's that's that could be also different opinions. And so that's our strategy, and we are keeping to that. So 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 that's where we are going and where we are focusing. Thank you for your uh, very comprehensive answer. Um, we received another question, which is as following. Right now, you have approximately 40 hectares, a slight increase in the recent years. What are your future projections? Thank you. Um, 
Okay. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned a couple of times, uh, at the moment, uh, the group doesn't have any plans uh, for acquisitions or uh, expansion. Uh, we really believe that we have to focus on, on our existing uh, volumes and, and to achieve maximum uh, result uh, from, from, from the volumes we are already working. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, our uh, area of, 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 of land we are working is, is changing every, every year slightly. And uh, uh, this is mainly affected uh, by uh, our aim uh, to, to work on most efficient way. Uh, because the majority of the land we operate is rented. Uh, so, of course, we're also looking uh, into ways how uh, we could maybe add uh, some 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 land plots which are very efficient for us to to to, to work and maybe at the same time we are also uh, canceling not canceling but we are not prolonging agreements for some of the lands which are not uh, efficient for us or not in the same area of of, of the bigger land plots we are having so this is uh, the growth is mainly related to to to, to that, but not to, to our plans to, to expand the area even further. Thank you for your answer, Mr. Ambrosas. Uh, another question would be, uh, what would be the price increase drivers of organic crops in the future? Thank you. Uh, I think uh, if we talk about overall uh, trends, uh, you know, it's very difficult, uh, first of all, to say that uh, the price will definitely increase. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, we can be sure on, on, on market developments, but, uh, uh, and, and we saw a trend of, of decreasing prices. Now we have a trend of slightly increasing prices for, for the last quarter and, uh, and a little bit more. Uh, but overall, if we look uh, at organic uh, product consumption, uh, I think uh, we all agree that the uh, demand for the products is growing and it's growing rapidly. Uh, I, I don't have statistics right away, but uh, I think it was uh, growth in double digits in, in all main markets for the last uh, 10 years. So, of course, uh, effect on price uh, will be how, how the supply, change, uh, supply side will change. So from, from one side, we, we believe that demand is there. So now it's a question about supply and, and, and other related things. But driver, of course, is, it's, uh, it's, it's demand from, from the consumer. Thank you once again, Mr. Ambrosas, for all your answers and comments. Uh, investors really appreciate them and we are still receiving quite uh, many questions. So let's proceed. Uh, the price Auga sells its organic milk is its organic milk is approximately 20% less than that of Germany level. Do you expect to get Germany level price for the organic milk in the near future? Thank you. Um, the slides uh, we are showing about uh, uh, German uh, organic market uh, is. Uh, because we want uh, just to give you understanding about, and for us, of course, we need to have understanding about the trends uh, in, in organic, uh, organic products. Uh, but uh, for us, I would say it's very difficult and, and, and impossible to get the same uh, price uh, as uh, organic producers. And here I'm talking not only about the milk, but then crops as well, just because for very, for very simple reasons. Uh, uh you know logistic costs are adding up so generally it's not like a commodity product which which has a market price and and, and can be sold but then uh, german buyer is, is 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 buying organic goods you know he is just measuring what price he is paying and for us if we look at organic price in germany so we always will get uh, minus transportation costs and we also have to understand that organic production is also uh, related to, to local production. So always, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, first uh, priority is local producers or nearby producers, 
and and the second option is uh, is uh, import of organic goods uh, from other countries so we understand that we will not be able to get uh, the same price uh, as as uh, in germany and and uh, we we know the reason uh, behind that uh, but you know we also have other uh, advantages in, in cost side etc so this this is acceptable for us thank you another question is as following what is the utilization of production capacity of M FMCG in AUGA? Thank you. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's not easy to, to give you an exact uh, figure because it also depends uh, in how many shifts we would operate. Uh, but as I said, uh, uh, we can easily double uh, production uh, without uh, investments or and, and increasing uh, our capacities so uh, you know uh, that would be my approximate guess but I would say like 40 percent uh, but but once again it's a subject of of the shifts and organizing your work and so on and so on so this could also differ thank you and could you please comment on what could be a long-term gross margin of the FMCG segment thank you um as we are not uh, uh, giving uh, specific uh, figures uh, forecasted figures uh, i can't uh, give you more detailed information on that but i would say that we really see a possibility to uh, continue uh, the growth in the segment based on contracts uh, we already signed and new markets we we opened uh, because if we started selling in 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 for example 2020 so we will just in, in this year we will see full effect on that we saw the same situation with us market when we started and we did the first sales in 2019 and now we have this as the largest market for us in 2020 so we still see that uh, this will give, give and this gives us a uh, belief uh, that we we will be able to to continue growth uh, in, in the segment uh, in 2020 and even going further thank you for your answer um another investor says thank you for the presentation and successful start in the first year of the five-year strategy and then uh, we have uh, two questions uh, from the same investor. So I will uh, say, say both of them in once. So the first part is, can you please repeat on which crop culture you added focus? And the second part is AUGA 2020 wheat price of uh, 208 euros per ton is much below 300 euros per ton organic feed wheat price in Germany, as shown in the graph. Can you explain reasons for the price deviation and do you expect in short term to reach German organic feed wheat price or is it highly unrealistic? Thank you and please let me know if I need to repeat some parts, okay? <laughs> um... Yes, if we can go through the questions one by one, yes. I think it will be a little bit yes. easier. So the first question was, uh, can you please repeat on which crop culture you added focus? Uh, okay, it's uh, maybe it's not, uh, you know, we can say that it's not added focus, but we have a specific project uh, and we uh, grow uh, uh, seed clover. So it's it's clover, but uh, it, it's used used uh, for for seeds. So so this is as I said, uh, our our uh, aim is also to to be uh, even though we are largest uh, producer in Europe, but also to specialize in some niche products and specific products where you need to know some know how, you need to know some specific things, and this which gives you uh, additional uh, benefit uh, and, and additional. Uh, profitability you would say so yeah this is not the typical product you you were growing but we had the first uh, test uh, last harvest harvest we did this successfully so now we expanding uh, area we are working with this uh, culture and as i said it's not only that we are growing but it's based on the contracts uh, for for selling uh, product uh, as well 
Okay, thank you. And moving on to the second question then, um, I will repeat it as well. AUGA 2020 wheat price of 208 euros per ton is much l below 300 euros per ton. Mm -hmm. or okay, uh, sorry. I I think I can answer that. Uh, okay. It's also for the same reasons when we talked about uh, dairy or milk uh, prices. So it's exactly the, the same reason. Uh, we will not be able to get exactly the same German prices as mentioned, just because of uh, transportation costs. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, German organic producers, uh, you know, the first uh, choice is of course, uh, German organic uh, crops. So uh, you need to be a little bit less, uh, you know, you your, your price should be a little bit uh, s uh, smaller in order to compete with that. So these like the two main drivers why uh, there is a differentiation between German and, and uh, prices and the prices we are getting. Thank you for your answer. Uh, another question, uh, one but last is, when will you see the share of food versus feed wheat for the next harvest? Thank you. Mm, can, you can you repeat that, please? Yes, of course. Uh, when will you see the share of food versus feed wheat for the next harvest? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I think we just missed one question from previous uh, person. Uh, because also trying to, to, to find in, in, in the system, but I will try to answer this and we can get back to, 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 to the previous uh, questions. Okay, uh, so my apologies um, for that. Yeah, so I think, uh, and that also, uh, unfortunately for, for us in uh, last uh, year, you know, you can't get uh, full uh, overview and, and clear picture of what kind of quality you are getting uh, before, before your harvest. Uh, so, you know, uh, all uh, final results will be clear only after harvest, so generally Q3. Thank you, and okay, I guess so, we are moving. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, so uh, if we go back to, to the third question, I think now I, I see that it was, can you confirm uh, that end of 21 expected uh, cow herd sizes for 1,600 cows? Uh, so yes, that's the plan. Uh, you know, uh, we expect uh, to have this maximum amount of cows even earlier, uh, but of course it's it's a subject of availability of, 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 of cows, you know, how much we can grow ourselves, how much we can uh, acquire and so on and so on. Uh, but the plan is uh, to have a full, full uh, cap capacity by uh, third quarter. Thank you for uh, covering the question that I miss. So if we proceed, we have the last question remaining then. Uh, FMCG segment growth in terms of percentage was great in some countries, but in terms of volume could be better. What is your expectation in absolute increase in this segment for 2021? Thank you. Mm. I can agree that uh, growth uh, always can be better. And, and as a person from finance side, I would love uh, the growth would be even higher. But I think uh, even uh, looking at, at the current uh, growth rate in, in absolute figures, uh, I still believe that we achieved quite quite a good result uh, because generally, you know, we started this, this business from, from zero. And now we are working with uh, major uh, retailers all over the world so it really takes time and then uh, hopefully this trend will continue and uh, we will have growth not only uh, in percentage wise but we will have absolute figures you know which 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 uh, would be impressive um, as uh, mentioned uh, we as we are not uh, dis disclosing specific information uh, I, I really can't uh, comment on on specific figures uh, regarding our growth uh, so i just can can repeat myself one more time that you know we we still believe that the growth uh, is here and and then we have a base uh, to, to believe that thank you so much for your answer 
And it looks like we have covered all the questions. So as all of them were answered on behalf of NASDAQ Vilnius, thank you everyone, uh, Mr. Ambroses and investors for this um, great discussion we had. It was my pleasure being with you today and recording and the presentation will be available in the NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. Thank you for the presentation once again and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you all and um, hopefully to, to, to meet you in our next uh, presentation in three months. <laughs>